Hello and good evening, my friends. My name is Neelay Patel. I am the owner of Silver Silk and more, and I'm also the designer here. My job is to bring you guys fun, creative, innovative projects using uh, Silver Silk, and I like to collaborate with many of my industry friends out there, like Jesse James Beats, Softflex Wire, um, Vintage. We got Tierra Cast. So there, there's quite a few friends I have out there. And uh, speaking of innovative, I'm excited about tonight's project. Uh, I try and bring you guys fresh, fun, new ideas, really innovative, unique ways to use some of the same products and uh, very unusual ways. And so I was kind of sketching some ideas out and I thought, what if I could come up with a pendant design, not using it as an actual chain, the silver silk. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with what silver silk is, it's a machine knitted jewelry chain. Um, if you're familiar with what the Viking knit weave is, this is kind of that um, and added with a chain, a double layer chain. So it's a ball chain that's been knitted over to create a very luxurious free flowing chain that is stitched to perfection. So what are the different ways that we could use this? Um, which brings me again to tonight's project. So I thought we could do a triple strand end cap, turning that into a pendant, which I haven't really seen before. So um, I'm gonna sketch out an idea for you guys tonight. And then my friends from Jesse James Beads sent me over one of their recent packages of beads called From Tucson With Love, which looks like this. Beautiful colors and arrangements of tassels, different beads and stuff. So I thought we could break into that and um, come up with a really cool design. Some of my friends are already joining in. Uh, Linda is here. She says she had trouble finding me, but you did. You did find me. So I'm excited that, that you're gonna be here tonight. So guys, give a shout out of where you're coming from. If you don't mind sharing this video while it's live and after it's been posted, I would really appreciate that. Uh, Heidi is here. Hello, Heidi. So I'm gonna work on flipping this camera around and we're gonna get started with tonight's project. So I promised a triple strand end cap, right? Here's what I'm talking about. We are gonna take a triple strand end cap, which looks like this um, in its packaged form. And we are going to turn that into a triple strand end cap. Now how this is gonna work is what I envision at least. So we put our end cap there and we can actually have some B or some, excuse me, some silver silk kind of going like that, right? Let's put an end cap at the bottom here. Joan is here from Knoxville, one of my dear friends in the industry. Her and Ginger get into quite a bit of trouble <laughs> on JTV and or just their regular adventures, but I'm always happy to see them. Uh, Jody is here. Hi, Jody. Heidi is uh, calling in from Minnesota, so got friends all over the place. All right, three strands, end cap on each side. What these are going to be color-wise, we I have a couple different ideas. Um, we could mix up some colors, which is one idea that I'm going to show you. And then um, I thought of doing one plain and then maybe throwing on some beads um, in between. So let's see. So if I've got this triple strand, we can add in a pendant of some sort here, a bead or, or something and then followed by maybe a little tassel here. So that's in its basic form, right? So what if we took this and then what if we evolved it? So I'll show you how to do this design pretty quickly. And then um, we're gonna take this and I thought of another idea as I was putting together these materials for tonight. What if we took that design and we had, maybe these are colors, so we can take um, three different colors, we can take our beautiful antique copper, olive, and golden, along with the darker end cap, because look how well this is going to match from Tucson with love. So let's bring all those out, but like, let's, like, how can you go wrong with that, right? We got the browns, the greens, and the golds to kind of match with all of this. I think that'll make for a beautiful combination. So we're gonna do that color combo with this design. And then this design, what I'm thinking is if we just take silver, oop, I L V E R if I could spell. And what I think we can do is kind of maybe just throw on a bead or a tassel here at the end, right? Maybe. Um, and then what I'm thinking is that let's, because this is going to be so monochromatic, I want to throw on some color onto that and make it 
make it special. So what if we hooked jump rings or simple loops and threw on some beads on this to give it texture, maybe some tassels. I don't know what we're going to do here. It's a representative drawing, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but what if what if all our color were introduced within the pendant itself? I think that might be a fun concept. I've, again, not seen anything quite like that before. So we're going to give that a shot and see where that goes. Uh, but these are our two goals for tonight. So let's get started. Um, here I've already pulled out three colors. We've got that antique copper, as I talked about, the new... Uh, or I should, it's not really new, I guess. This one has been around for a while, but it's restocked the olive. And then golden, beautiful colors, right? I think that's going to go really good together for this first one. Um, I'm dying to get in these beads because Jesse James is put together from Tucson with love. They just recently went to Tucson and had this special collection out there. Uh, what I didn't realize with this company, and I've kind of been preaching about it for quite some time now, is that they um, dye, they not only create these beautiful beads in house, the design of them, but they also hand dye these beads in house, which is quite amazing. They're able to get these specific colors in all ranges. This is really, oh, there we go. The packaging is smarter than me. Um, they're able to get specific colors and, and all shades and everything in between. Uh, so I didn't know about know that about them. So I thought that was very special. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. So pretty. Now, these are going to spill all over the place. I already know it. I'm a little bit scared where this is going. Oh, gosh. Okay. So <laughs> so I'm going to get I'm going to get a tray or something. Just, I know where this is heading to the floor if I'm not careful. There we go. Well, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. Got it all. Oh, thank goodness. That's always very, very stressful for me. They pack so much into here, so I don't ever know where it's going to go. Okay, and these bigger ones do not scare me because I can count how many there are. There we go. Let's see. Pamela says, hi, Neelay and the Silkies. Oh, my Silkies group. Guys, I have a Facebook group. If you're not familiar with Facebook, I mean, I shouldn't say that because everyone's supposed to, uh, like mostly everyone's familiar with Facebook. But if you're on the social media, please look up and like Silver Silk. Um, I am extremely interactive on there. You can catch me all the time trying to respond to everybody's comments and just making sure that I get the word out there about new stuff. And I just started a little group of us makers of silver silk out there called the Silver Silk Silkies. Um, it wasn't me who came up with that idea. I must say it was one of one of my um, customers and friends. And I just thought Silkies kind of stuck, so I was like, why not? So please look us up if you're out there. All right, all my beads are out. So let's get started with the designing. I'm going to take my triple strand end caps. These are these guys right here. What's special about these is that they do not require, they're end caps that don't require any glue or any special type of um, procedure to make it crimp. You basically just stick in the different strands of silver silk. So here, I'll do that now. So I'm gonna start with the gold, go with the olive, and oops, kind of do have to tuck that in there to make it stay, especially for these triple strand end caps. But once it's in there, it's all good. It's got little teeth inside of it, which is quite clever um, for these particular end caps because that's what's really securing this to the end cap. All right, so once they're all in there, I'm just gonna give it a good squeeze with my uh, nylon jaw pliers here. And the reason I wanna use nylon jaw pliers is because it will not scratch my end cap and as expensive as these little puppies are, I want to make sure that my my piece is extremely well done quality wise. Um, and I don't want any markings on my beautiful end cap, so that looks great there. All right, so I'm gonna drag it down. <laughs> Kathy says toot toot, Tuesday toots. That's what these are. Got a toot during our Tuesday toots, right? All right. 
looks like that's probably about a good dis I, I don't need very much um so clearly this particular idea is gonna go a long ways with the with the knitted wire here so you can kind of decide how long you want this to be so better to start safe i say cut more than less and then you can always trim off a little bit extra later if you don't um care for that size so looks good looks like i kind of staggered it by accident so i'm gonna even those out here there we go and same thing stick in your end cap making sure that if your logo side is front facing on the previous end cap that you do the same to this side so that you don't have mixed match end caps so that looks pretty good to me once that is done just go back to your chain nose pliers and give it a good press and that's it so that is my beautiful little pendant in its simplistic form now i want to go ahead and complete the other one just since we're all here um crimping away and i wanted to show you guys because this is in the clearance section i have triple strand end caps and these are the pewter ones um i am no longer continuing to um, have pewter on my website so if you check out the clearance section you can get these puppies for i think it's a set of four for like 450 or something it's like 40 percent off um, but they, they look a little different from my brass. My brass ones are super high quality and, um, definitely are the ones for the experience silver silkies. <laughs> the pewter ones are great. They're just not as sustainable as the brass ones. But if you're wanting to get some practice and get some inexpensive end caps, definitely want to check out the clearance section on www.silversilkonline.com. All righty. Same procedure here. We're going to stick in all of our strands. I need to cut some. So I'm going to estimate, like, maybe right there. Do my best to stay on camera here. I apologize if it's a little bit dark to see. We're just now getting some sunshine back. Here with daylight savings time. All right, so all of my strands are in there, and that looks really good. So here I'm going to use my nylon jaw pliers, give it a good push. Um, I don't want to see a seam in there whenever I'm pressing everything shut, so that looks really good to me, and it's not going to come out. Again, evening out the three strands. Perfect. That is too long. You can absolutely cut it a little bit shorter, which is, I think, what I want to do here. There we go. And attach the other end cap. So that looks really good to me. I am going to crimp it. There we go. And that will be my... Uh, my more elaborate one. So Jesse James Beads is on. Um, that would hopefully be, I think, Sarah from Jesse James Beads. Hi, my friends out there. I'm using your beautiful beads tonight, which I'm really thrilled about. And we are making two different pendants. One will be a simplistic interpretation and one will be a more colorful, elaborate interpretation of this pendant. So now we get to design however we want this. So remember I said kind of neutral maybe on this one and we're gonna go a little bit simplistic but with color on this guy. So I'm trying to think here, like maybe that's a good option for this guy. Um, and then maybe we're gonna use some of these beautiful beads on this one with the uh, the simple loop method. So this looks really good to me. I'm going to find some stuff here that matches. My eye pins are gunmetal colored, so let's use that. And actually what I want to do is go ahead and attach this together first. So let me find some tools here. I love these little tassels. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to attach the tassel to my simple loop. And I'm going to attach 
my bead onto my eye pin and make another simple loop. So pretty easy so far. Remember, jewelry making does not need to be complicated as much as something that just looks cool and original, you know? Like, that's kind of the, the point of these tutorials, and at least the exercise for my brain is to come up with some fun ideas that are not complicated, but still have that wow factor for fashion and design. Cool. Yeah, and I, to Joan's point, I love these Mandela beads. They're super... Super cool looking. So not only is the design original, but so are the beads. Just fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Cool. Okay. So attaching all of that. So if you were looking for something simplistic and fun, there we go. We got these beautiful triple colors. If you have scraps, if you want to buy new stuff, always, always a good idea to try and mix things up if whatever you have. Okay. So this one's a little bit more challenging so we're gonna have to figure out how to do that i need some wire which is over here which i didn't grab and while we're here okay sorry about that folks i just wanted to make sure that i grabbed some craft wire because i think in order to make this one work i'm gonna need I'm gonna need some craft wire so i'm using 22 gauge of craft wire and silver and the point is to connect this onto my triple strand end cap. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sort of a wire wrapped loop on this brioche. I think that's how it's pronounced, brioche. And um, basically, I wrapped it around the top there. And then trim the rest of that off. There we go. Sarah says that would make a pretty earring. Definitely. If you're really going for that chandelier extreme look, that's going to be perfect for that. I do love a long earring too, though. Okay. Um, and then now I can make a simple loop. So that was a lot easier than I was thinking. <laughs> Sometimes that is... Um, Sometimes that's a pleasant surprise. Okay, and then I can make a simple loop here. And what we're gonna do is just attach that, oops, to our, here we go, to our end cap. There we go, perfect. Cool, okay, so now we have a nice neutral design here but here's where the fun part comes in you guys we can take some things where i was like looking for my head pins there we are some head pins and start to attach some stuff to to our to our pendant here so for example what if we took ugh, let's see there's so many beads to choose from okay what if we took this green bead all right we're gonna take this green bead String it onto our little head pin. I'm going to trim. Whoa, that went flying across the room, you guys. I got to pick that up later. We are going to string that bead on, make a simple loop to this. Looks like that's a little bit too spaced out there. So we're going to trim it right there. And I want to make it a little bit bigger, that loop. There we are. And let's see. Whoops. Okay. So I have I have a simple loop, right? What if we took our beading hall? Where did I put it? And let's start to figure out places we could because this is this is the power of silver silk the real beauty comes into what you can do with it right so like we're gonna attach it directly to the silver silk and get some nice pops of color in there so what i did was i just took a beading all um anything with a, a needle point or something that you can use as a as a way to pick up pick some of the knits out of this hopefully that made sense and um 
begin to attach some of this stuff. So where that was picked out, I can actually attach my simple loop to just like that. This will give it some shimmy um, whenever you're wearing it, which is I think a fun idea. But also like, because it's such a neutral palette, like why not introduce some color into it, right? So maybe we do that there. Maybe we put this here. I don't know. We're just making this stuff up as we go along, right? So again, use your beading all. Push that wire up. And attach your component. Pretty cool, right? Like I thought of this on the drive back to my house. I was like, this is going to be way too simple of a project. So I need to figure out how to how to make it a little more challenging and really utilize the beauty of these gorgeous beads in a way that they deserve to be. Ooh, look at that. It's giving me goosebumps. Okay. I can get crazy with this, you guys. Like, what if we added more beads, more feathers, more crystals? Like, possibilities are just going to be endless or until I run out of head pins. <laughs> so that is a good sign for some fun creativity and design here. So Jesse James Beads says they think this is a fun design. I am with you guys on that. This is actually making me excited. Simple techniques, you guys. You don't need to know a whole lot of technique driven things here like simple loops and some unusual ways to attach things that's about it and silver silk you guys like can't really do this with any other chain that i'm aware of and if you can i would love to see what you guys come up with always it's always inspiring to see what our customers and friends do I get excited about it and energized and I start want to want to make things. And it's what really the creative community is about. We're just trying to make friends, have fun, learn a few things along the way. You know, one big family, of course. Oh, there we go. Let's attach a few more things. And then I'll cover some tips on chains. So I have a few ideas, but it's always... Uh, it's always hard for me to decide on the spot. Oh, yes, that one needs to go there. I should be reading some of these comments. Let's see, what do we got? Kathy says, super creative, thank you. Sarah Ellis is on, hi Sarah. Good to see you here. She has her own channel as well. Um, please check out artist Sarah Ellis on YouTube. She has some fun creative projects too that I'm a huge fan of, so. Sabine says, so cute. Thank you, Sabine. It's our friend from the Netherlands. We're just all over the place here, all over the world. It's incredible. Joan says, I would have never thought to do that. So beautiful and creative. Thank you, Joan, I appreciate that. Woo, my tassel's getting out of hand here. Let's see if I can carefully get this in there springtime glamour yes ma'am that's what i'm talking about you could do this to both sides too because if you're thinking about wearing a necklace you i think you kind of have to think in a three-dimensional aspect and so if you put some on the front you could definitely put some on the back just to kind of balance it out in case um, in, in, in case you decide to shimmy your way to work or <laughs> wherever you're going, um, think about, think about the other side of the design too. If it flips over, what is it going to look like? So just a consideration. All right. Maybe like one more bead you guys. And then I think that's good for this pendant. So many, like I'm trying to dig out which one to use from here. And it's always really, really tough. For me to pick out so many beautiful beads on the spot. <laughs> Joan says, I wonder if it'd be scary to hang out in my head. It's definitely that. But it's also a very fun place to be. <laughs> uh, I have some funny friends here. It's great. All right, whoops. 
All right, simple loop making. Sarah says, this is the first time watching. I've been making jewelry for about six months. I bought some silver silk a few months ago, and I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. Man, that possibilities are endless. And like, I wrote a book uh, using silver silk and bead weaving a few years ago. But it, it it's always surprising me of how many things just pop into my head. You know, and I, I try and visit other fashion accessory site like Anthropology and stuff. And I'm looking at some of that stuff and I'm like, oh, that would be so cool to see that in Silver Silk. So I'm getting inspiration from all over the place and making sure that I funnel it in a in a way that makes sense to our little group of creators and craft industry here that people can do. Um you know, and I'm always learning new things on the spot as well. So it's it's definitely a learning process both ways. For sure. Okay, so there we go. But you know what, guys? It all starts with a sketch. That's really what many of my designs boil down to. So got to have that first initial idea in mind. Yeah, so, I mean, you could go on and on connecting to different, but like, neutral oh, sorry that's a really messy board so let's go to something cleaner now that we have our designs established uh there we go so we got this beautiful neutral triple strand end caps with the silver colored silver silk in pearlesque chain and we've got the uh, colored ones with just a simplistic you know bead arrangement so there's two different ways that you could, well, more than that, certainly, but the, the two quick ways that I thought of that people can make here. Um, what I was thinking in my head for a chain was it would be really cool to use a cup chain on this guy, only because we get these beautiful colors that accent our palette, um, and the cup, can, uh, blah, blah, the cup chain came from Jesse James Beats, I can't talk, um, so I think that'd be a really cool, like, easy thing for that. And then for this one, because we're using so many colors on that, I don't want to overcomplicate it. So I'm kind of thinking, like, a nice gunmetal chain, which I happen to have here with me. Um, this one happens to be from Vintage, but I believe Jesse James Beats can pull out some links and um, some products for us that they might have but if not certainly vintage is a great place to also find some cool chains but like yeah don't overcomplicate it because it's it's fashion it needs to be pretty um i don't know i guess for everyday fashion it can be a little bit more straightforward uh, to me i guess what i'm thinking in my head fashion shouldn't really have any rules but from a design standpoint <laughs> whatever you're trying to exaggerate you kind of have to tone down other things um, so I think, I think if you are doing an arrangement, this would work out really well. So you guys, that concludes my tutorial for tonight. I will, um, assemble these chains and I'm going to, um, make sure that I take a photograph of it and post it on the social media platforms for you guys. So that includes, um, Facebook, please check out Silver Silk and more on Facebook. By, um, Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com, just search for Silver Silk and you will find me. Um, Instagram is another platform that I'm on. You will find a ton of examples on there using Silver Silk. If you are new to Silver Silk, do not know what to do with it, all of the examples are on there. And all of those coordinate with the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel has all the same pictures, but you can actually see the video on how to do it. So tons of examples and ideas out there for you guys. And um, always, always thinking about what more I can do to help um, propel some ideas and some design forward. Uh, otherwise, you can check out these products in two different locations. If you love the Silver Silk, you can check out www.silversilkonline.com. And if you love the beads that I'm using tonight, and these beads are pretty special, you can check out jessejamesbeads.com. All right, guys, it's been an evening. I'm going to get to my e the rest of my evening and in, in creating some extra stuff. And um, Tuesday Toots, you guys, if you haven't heard about it, make sure you spread the news. Every Tuesday at 5.30 in the evening, Central Time, some of you might be in different regions of the world um, or coasts or everywhere, but 5.30 Central because I'm based here in Oklahoma, you can catch me live on YouTube. 
Um, please spread it around to your friends like it's hot gossip. I don't want anyone to miss these fun tutorials and to miss out on the fun that we have with Silver Silk and Jesse James Beads and Softlux Wire and Tierra Cast and Vintage. So, uh, Vintage, excuse me. Um, creativity is where it's at, and that's that's my number one mission. So, until next time, I will see you guys again here on the Silver Silk channel. You guys, have a good evening, and I love all of you. Good night. <laughs>